In the series of natural dyes, we now come to yet another natural dye which is in the category of flavonoid dyes and the representative plant that we have chosen with which we did uh, work in great detail in order to show its usability and the plant is called Eclipta alba. Eclipta alba was found abundantly in our place and as a result we thought this can be taken up as a representative flavonoid dye component from the natural dye series. We have learned about anthocyanins, we have learned about indigoids, we have learned about anthroquinoids and we have also learned about the carotenoids. Now it is time to look at the most abundantly available colorant called the flavonoids and the plant that we chose which was for the first time used as a natural dye uh, component for textiles from our laboratory. This is how the plant looks like. This is a common Eclipta alba plant which is a, like a creeper and this was used. So, Eclipta alba is an annual herb with leaves which are rich source of natural dyes. In continuation with our work using ultrasonic dyeing, the present lecture investigates the dyeing and fastness properties of Eclipta on cotton fabrics. Different factors affecting dyeability and fastness properties were investigated to show the commercial viability of Eclipta and also to meet the eco-friendliness parameters. So, we were trying to see whether it befits a dye category or not and for fitting into the dye category, the dye source or the extract must be very compatible with the cellulosic material. Because time and again I have told you that cellulosic material are most difficult to dye and if we can use any extract for cellulosic fiber using it for other fibers like protein, proteinaceous fibers or synthetic fibers will not be such a big challenge and that is why we use, we try to use this extract primarily for cotton because if as it the saying goes, if the uh, war is uh, you know won by cotton dyeing then the rest will all follow. So, the same way we try to look at the fastness properties that were related whether it is giving good fastness property and whether it is first and the foremost thing that comes to our mind does it give a continuous source of colorant. Because if we are dependent on seasonal plant we will have to wait for that season to come then only the flower will be available or the plant part will be available for dye extraction. But here was an annual herb which is a perennial herb and leaves could be taken off. It is a renewable source of uh, uh, material that can be utilized for extraction of dye. The next point that comes to mind is what is the kind of dye to fiber compatibility and we found that yes it is a, it has a good compatibility. Then we tried to in our exercise of popularizing sonicator we tried to show that does it uh, you know also does this dye from the eclipta the flavonoid dye from the eclipta help to get uh, adhered more by sonication method or is it that the conventional method is better for this dye. So, this kind of continuous parallel studies we did for various dyes of different origins or belonging to different chemically uh, chemical class of uh, compounds and we came to a conclusion that flavonoids are also very compatible first thing. Second thing is that we found out that these flavonoid dyes have a very uh, beautiful chemistry of chelation 
just the way the anthroquinoid dyes or the anthocyanin dyes chelate with the metal. So, now the question was can we also replace the metal because the second exercise that we were emphasizing in our laboratory that is it possible to replace the metal mordanting step with either a biomordant or uh, uh, by enzymes and those kind of exercises we did with eclipta and we came to a conclusion that yes it is a good uh, you know a member of the natural dye series which can be explored for commercial dyeing. So, therefore, we tried to work with um, Eclipta with different mordanting methods. The dyeing of cotton fabric using Eclipta as natural dye has been studied in both conventional and sonicator methods. As Eclipta is a source of flavonoid dyes, we tried to show results of dyeing with metal mordants and compared it with biomordant and enzymes to evaluate the possibility of metal mordant replacing the metal mordanting method. So, you see that the whole exercise may appear to be similar, but since this is a different class of uh, compound called the flavonoid dyes. We did this exercise with anthroquinoid dyes, we did the same exercise with anthocyanin dyes and when we were successful in finding uh, that natural dyes are having a good compatibility with cotton, then those were screened out in the lab and suggested to the industry that these are some of the newer sources of natural dyes. The effect of dyeing shown by all three techniques were evaluated. Higher color strength values obtained by the latter that is the possibility of using biomodants and the enzymes. Kinetics the dyeing kinetics of cotton fabric were compared for both the methods. We try to see whether really there is any kind of dye enhancement, dye uptake enhancement with the help of sonicator or not. Because unless and until we establish that, we cannot say that sonicator is better than conventional. So, that is the reason why conventional dyeing method that is the regular you know boiling method was tried out. And let me tell you that Eclipta gave a very good solution or extraction with water. So, there was no need to add any HCl or any base because the dye itself precipitated in a very fine manner. The time and dye uptake reveals the enhanced dye uptake showing sonicator efficiency. So, we even tried to see whether really there is any contribution or efficiency made by the dye or not or by the sonicator method or not. Because each dye as I told you has its own reactivity with the fiber, how much it will penetrate, what kind of bonding it will form with the fiber, whether it will be ionic bonding or coordinate bonding or covalent bonding or hydrogen bonding or van der Waal forces or electrostatic forces, we have learnt it all in different aspects. Now is the time to correlate these with keeping in mind the chemistry of the fiber and the dye. So, it was important to take a look at what is the structural detail of the flavonoid dyes. The results of fastness properties of the dyed fabrics were fair to good. C lab values were also evaluated because you see unless and until we evaluate the C lab values, it will not be clear what kind of shades are obtained from these dyes because you may think it is giving green, I may think it is giving some other shade of light yellowish green. So, that uh, discrepancy can be completely removed if we have a IUPAC nomenclature kind of naming system and here it is a numeric number system for describing a color which is done by the C lab values. So, 
Now this eclipta plant let us try to see how easy it is to grow. The ease of growing the eclipta plantation, abundance and ease of extraction of the colorant make it an interesting source of natural dye. Because you see if the extraction process or the availability or the plant you know agronomics is very difficult, one cannot uh, depend on this kind of natural dye source. So, here was a candidate which had ease of growing, ease of plantation, ease of extraction and it was abundantly available to the uh, user. The revival of natural dyes has prompted to screen newer natural dye sources. Therefore, it is with this aim that the present work has been investigated and the dyeing property of eclipta, a cheap and abundantly available plant and developed methods to optimize its dyeing characteristic have has been described. Because see this is a new source, so we have to find out all the details of this new source. So, looking at the chemistry because I have already mentioned that it is a flavonoid dyes, it is basically a flavone gluco glycoside. The methanolic extract is a dark green solution because it is a leaf uh, extract. So, obviously some chlorophyll will run into it with a characteristic odor. It is a its principal constituent is the herb which contains vedolactone and dimethyl vedolactone which were isolated by cro column chromatography. But these lactones do not participate in dyeing. It is the presence of the flavon particularly the epigenin and the luteolin as the flavon 7 0 glycoside rather 7 O glycoside and the flavone C glucosides are the main colorant. So, you see that these are the two main compounds which are abundantly present in the leaves apart from chlorophyll and because of the green color of the chlorophyll these yellow looking dyes are completely masked when it comes to uh, the extract. But nevertheless, they are prominently present and are the main constituent of the extract. The use of other flavonoids dye has been precedented in the literature. So, we know that it is not the first time or the first dye of the flavonoid series that we have used. Nobody used eclipta as a source of flavonoid dye that is true. But there were other flavonoids extracted from marigold flowers and were investigated for dyeing potential. Petulitrine and petulatine were isolated and their structures established using NMR and HPLC MS. These compounds were identified as the main flavonoids present in the dye bath. Following the dyeing process, it was demonstrated that the A glycon 2 bound uh, more uh, strongly to the well wool fibers than its glycoside which is 1. So, that means the A glycon is the one which is more uh, deeply or uh, strongly attached to the fiber. The glucoside is just hanging there because it is present in the nature or in when it is extracted it has a glucoside, but that glucoside or glycoside is hydrolyzed and the A glycon is the one which forms the strong bond with the fiber. Other flavonoids documented are moreover analysis focused that the number 1 that is the glucoside and number 2 dynamics during the plant growth reveal that these components were only found in flowers during and after flowering. The influence of growing location was also investigated and it appeared that cultivation under Mediterranean conditions enhanced the biosynthesis of the formation of the A glycon and the glucoside. 
Finally, several solvents were tested for their potential to extract the flavonoids. The use of water ethanol mixture gave a high extraction efficiency and allowed selective extraction of the A glycon and the glucoside. The implications of these results are discussed in relation to the development of marigold as a potential dyeing plant. So, a whole lot of exercise with marigold flavonoids had already been carried out. So, we had a kind of um, uh, you know chart to work with, we knew how to proceed, what are the essential steps that we should take in order to extract the flavonoid dye, how should we isolate the flavonoid or how should we characterize it, because it is important to then be able to say with lot of confirmation that the Eclipta Elba extract has abundance of flavonoids which participate in the dyeing process. So, we took help of the UV visible spectrum of Eclipta and we found that in our case the dye was extracted in aqueous medium by boiling in water and then it was the same extract was actually used for dyeing after concentrating it for 50 by 50 percent. So, you see no acid is added, simply the leaves of Eclipta alba plant are taken, even the stems have uh, a lot of colorant. So, they are all chopped off and boiled in water. The extraction was carried out for 3 to 4 hours. The solution was then evaporated to half of its original volumes, that is what I said that it was reduced for dyeing because you see otherwise it will be a very dilute solution and the color will on the fabric will appear very faded. So, for that matter we need to concentrate the dye extract and once it is evaporated to 50 percent that means it is concentrated to 50 percent the UV visible spectrum was recorded at wavelength between 400 to 800. Now, this is a visible region with the maximum absorbency of 1.3, the peak that appeared at 4.2 nanometer is characteristic peak for flavonoids, while the peaks at 432, 608, 665 nanometers were for chlorophyll pigment. So, it co-extracted because water is such a universal solvent that along with flavonoids, both the chlorophyll pigments also came along. Now, if one has to take a look at the UV visible spectrum of uh, the extract, in the visible region that is from 400 to 800 uh, nanometer in shows that there is a distinct peak at 402, then there is a peak at uh, about 475 and so on and so forth. So, these are some very characteristic flavonoid peaks and it at least goes to prove partially that flavonoids are definitely a part of the extract. Now, looking at one of the molecules, see this is the structure of luteolene 7 O glucoside. Now, the glucoside is hanging on the top and then is a benzenoid ring which has one hydroxy and the third uh, ring has two hydroxy. Now, these two hydroxies are actually ortho to each other, very ideally suited for metal chelation. So, you understand that now by looking at this particular one flavonoid I have taken, although it has epigenin and other flavon flavones also. But this itself will give you an insight that how beautifully now the metal or the enzyme or the biomodin can chelate because it has the right kind of appendage for chelation. Now, as what we know that every fabric has to be treated before dyeing can be uh, can be started. So, the fabric was desized in a liquor containing 5 gram or non ionic soap in a liter of water. The material to liquor ratio was taken as 1 is to 40. The fabric was boiled at 95 degrees for 1 hour 
and rinsed thrice in cold water and dried under shade. The de-sized cotton fabric was or rather the scoured fabric was then treated with tannic acid solution. The material to liquor ratio was 4 percent the weight of the fabric. Tannic, tannic acid treatment is a must when we are dyeing cotton and time and again when we have spoken about natural dyeing, I have told you that this particular uh, step cannot be avoided for the simple reason that cotton does not have enough of hydroxy groups free to chelate with the metal or with the dye or the metal chelated dye. So, in that case this tannic acid treatment then offers linking group or attachment groups ready to attach the chelated dye. So, that is the role of tannic acid. This treatment is not required in when we are doing the dyeing of silk and wool for the simple reason that there the amide linkages have CO and NH2 and these are quite efficient in forming hydrogen bonding and covalent bonding and so on and therefore, th this kind of uh, tannic acid treatment is just not required when we are talking about dyeing of silk and wool. But in case of cotton, I have told you and again I am telling you that tannic acid treatment is a must and the role of tannic acid is to provide appendages or linking heads so that the chelated dye can attach. The fabric was soaked in tannic acid solution for 3 to 4 hours even or it can be 4 to 5 hours, but it should be freshly treated with tannic acid. One cannot keep the tannic acid treated fabric for too long and then it is air dried. The dyeing cotton with eclipta extract to fix the dye on the cotton fabric the method of mordanting tried is pre-mordanting involving treatment of fabric with metal salts such as alum, stannic acid, stannous chloride, stannic uh, chloride, uh, stannous chloride, ferrous sulphate, copper sulphate, potassium dichromate and then it is followed by dyeing or we can use biomordant such as urea acuminata. And we know that in urea acuminata there is sufficient amount of aluminum or we can use enzymes such as lipase or protease amylase combination or diesterase. So, these are some of the mordanting methods that we applied. Metal mordanting was only done for comparison sake because we were trying to uh, replace this metal mordanting method with the help that in and in order to show the efficacy of the biomordant and the enzyme, we had to make a comparative data between the metal mordanting prevalent method with these two methods. So, now, we have learnt one thing that pre mordanting and dyeing gives rise to two different steps. So, we call it two step and the change in K by S values when noted for lipase, biomordant, protease amylase and diesterase was found that the protease amylase uh, showed the best result with eclipta. Nevertheless, even the biomordant was not far too behind. You can see that they are all very competitive in terms of their effect e efficacy. Similarly, if the uh, um, enzyme or the biomordant was uh, put in the dye bath uh, with the extract e eclipta extract, the change in K by S shows that lipase shows the best result. So, you see that whether we take a, a one step methodology for dyeing or we take two step methodology for dyeing, we need to understand which is the best option and in the case of one step definitely it is lipase which is very well compatible 
with the natural dye eclipta. Earlier also we have seen that with enzyme there is a small drawback that the compatibility of the enzyme and the dye has to be worked out. It is not that all dyes and all enzyme work together and with the same efficiency. So, that kind of exercise needs to be always done when we are dealing with enzymes and new natural dyes. Nevertheless, biomodent also showed very efficient result and that was of prime importance. In order to make comparison, we also did an, the same analysis with metal modents and metal modents like alum, copper sulphate, ferrous sulphate and uh, stannous and stannic chloride were all tried out, but this particular slide shows the comparison between the or the change in K by S uh, of the control sample which has no modent with alum, copper sulphate and ferrous sulphate. So, that one can see that ferrous sulphate shows the best result, but because it has a you know a tendency to form uh, a kind of a lake with the tannic acid and ferrous tannate is generated, there is a lot of uh, darkening of the fabric because of the ferrous mordenting. But we were not interested in looking at that, we were trying to see how efficient is the tannic acid process and we found that the K by S values in the one step is ranging uh, from 6 to 7 and the two step it is ranging from uh, 3.5 to 4.5, but in the metal mordenting step although it is range, uh, it is almost reaching 6 to 7, but at what cost? the disposal of these metal modens become a very big problem. So, therefore, there is a need for the replacement of metal modenting step with either the use of biomodent or the use of enzymes. Now, if we try to look at this particular slide, you will see that this eclipta can show beautiful results and this is how this color scan machine gives its result. The output of the result output of the color scan machine is that the K by S value is shown that uh, with different uh, substrate that is by using biomodent and lipase. The second one is the lipase and number one is biomodent and you see that how beautifully the color or the greenish olive green color is obtained from the eclipta extract. Now, time and again we have been talking about sonicator and we have understood that this agitation mode definitely helps in dye uptake. What else does it do to the fabric? The sonicator used here is a 20 kilohertz frequency machine which is found to be suitable for inducing cavitation. It is well known that cavitation which causes formation and collapse of the micro bubbles is most effective for better dye uptake. Time and again we have shown with not less than 30 different natural dyes that sonicator method is certainly very good for dyeing. We have also shown that sonicator was used in certain dyes where it was used for extraction because the dyes were heat sensitive. So, therefore, it has a very positive role to play in the dyeing process. The micro bubbles which are unstable slowly grow in the process of oscillation. Finally, they implode violently thereby generating momentary localized high pressures and temperature. This activated state causes chemical reaction between the fabric and the dye by forming shock waves and severe shear force capable of breaking chemical bonds. So, you see that at that kind of agitation, what happens to the chemistry of the dye and the fiber? There has to be some alteration, there has to be some reason which enhances the dye uptake and it is clearly now understood that the dye forming activity with the fiber 
is happening only because of these kind of shock waves and the shear force which are very severe in nature and they kind of tend to break certain bonds and make certain new bonds. Dyeing with eclipta leaf extract by sonicator gives better dye uptake as compared to the conventional method and it is also uh, it also does give some variation in color. The color adherence to fabric is good since the dyeing process involves a fast adsorption process and subsequent a slow diffusion process the latter will determine the rate of dyeing with eclipta extract. So, there are two different processes occurring one is a fast adsorption and the other one is a slow diffusion. So, these two rates have to match and then only the dyeing will be complete or it has to be given enough time for the dye to completely diffuse. So, that the you know the exhaustion of the dye is complete because the ultimate aim is that this kind of sonicator agitation must cause an enhancement in the dye uptake. The absorbances are recorded at initial and final time to calculate the rate of reaction as absorbance of the dye bath is directly related to the concentration of the dye bath. See what will happen as the time proceeds the dye from the dye bath will be going into the fabric. Now, if the rate is uh, you know fairly uh, medium or slow even if it is slow at whatever rate it is diffusing the dye is getting depleted from the dye bath, but it is getting enhanced on the fabric. So, the rate of loss in the dye bath will be equivalent to the rate of gain in the fabric and that is what is taken into account because instead of destroying the fabric or doing a desorption study it is better to just evaluate the concentration of the dye that is present before, during and after the dyeing. So, that will give an idea at what time till what time how much has diffused and that helps us to understand the kinetics of dyeing. Sonicator efficiency, when we say it is good, it is good, it is good, how good it is? So, that efficiency also can be calculated. The efficiency of sonicator was calculated by the extent of dye uptake over a period of time. The value of sonicator dyeing efficiency is higher than the conventional dyeing which indicates that sonicator dyeing is more effective as the use of sonicator is for more economical dye uptake it eventually works out to be cost effective too. Because you see if the dye uptake is faster the fabric will not need to be heated or boiled as in the conventional method it takes almost 3 to 6 hours. Whereas, in sonicator it takes only 1 to 3 hours. So, that time saving is there, energy saving is there and obviously, money saving comes automatically. So, that is why it is not only cost effective, but one can even find out the sonicator's efficiency percentage by the dye uptake taken by the fabric by the sonicator method over the dye uptake by fabric. Uh, by the conventional method in a given period of time. See, we cannot have variables here, the time has to be fixed. In one hour, how much uh, fabric uh, has uh, taken up the dye in sonicator method that can be evaluated from the UV visible, uh, you know, evaluation of the dye bath solution after dyeing of one hour. And the same experiment is con, uh, you know conducted for the conventional method dye bath and that those values will show us how much of the dye uptake has taken by sonicator method and how much of dye bath uh, dye uptake has been taken by the conventional method. So, the time factor should remain the same 
it is not that in 3 hours how much it has taken and in 6 hours how much it has taken that will be wrong calculations. So, that will not give a correct uh, sonicator efficiency. So, if I have to conclude I will say that a large scale production of textile dyed with natural dye is a new concept for natural uh, for textile industries. We hope that eclipta dye extract will definitely find great use in cotton industry especially when greens, browns and yellow color range dyings have to be done. The sonicator shows about 7 to 9 percent efficiency higher than the conventional dye as the use of sonicator is far more economical dye uptake is eventually worked out to be most co cost effective also. Because when we try to offer a methodology to the industry, we have to show that it has an edge over the conventional method. Otherwise, nobody is going to take this technology and also whether all the parameters of a good dye is being fulfilled by a new dye that has been screened from the natural dye series of dye yielding plants. We have to see many factors, in, we have to take into account many factors and those factors are that it should be water soluble, it should be easily extractable, it should have all the goodness of being compatible with the toughest of the tough material that is cotton. If it can dye cotton, it can definitely dye silk and wool, there is no doubt about it. And anyway natural dyes are not meant for synthetic uh, fibers like polyester, polyacrylamide. Uh, so, we need not worry about the synthetic fibers at all. Looking at the natural fiber demand, if any dye can uh, dye cotton, then that dye comes into a good dye category. The next point that needs to be remembered is that the fastness properties should be good. It should not be that in one wash the dye has run off or stripped off. In such a case, it will not uh, be a good uh, member of a good natural dye. Therefore, sonication method is definitely adding on to the efficiency Replacement of metal mordants with bio mordants or enzyme is not only taking care of the uh, eco friendliness and the disposal problem of the dye effluent, but it is also biodegradable. So, there is no problem of effluent disposal at all whatsoever and the dye you know can be actually the dye disposal or the dye bath effluent disposal can easily be done into the agricultural lands without destroying the chemistry of the soil and it can be very well used for irrigation purposes. So, that is the whole idea of talking about today's flavonoid dye which was uh, extracted from the plant called Eclipta alba.